All right, so you guys are on the on the in search of some place to eat. Okay. <laughs> All right, so the uh, whoever whoever's leading the the charge to find a brunch place, roll an investigation check. Um, I assume it's cacophony. Actually, I suggested getting oh, food. You, so you I'll, did suggest I'll get food. It. You do it. You got yeah. it. Yeah. All right, investigation check. Uh, eleven. Okay. <laughs> You're asking around and. A couple of people you ask are very clearly perplexed when you mention brunch. <laughs> you know, like 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 it's <laughs> breakfast food but not but later in the day, but it's lunch. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like somewhere between there's like sometimes there's deli meats, but there's also like eggs and stuff and and locks. Do you know where we can get locks? <laughs> you know. I would have never thought it before, but Eastheim seems to be a very forward place as far as food goes. Apparently. This is their one modern innovation. Everything else is stuck in the Viking Age. But you can get brunch. We don't even have gunpowder, but we do have brunch. Yes. <laughs> I'm glad we have our priorities straight. We do, though. Technological development is interesting. Anyway, you eventually get a pointer to a, a tavern called the Spicy Tuba. Huh. Sounds interesting. Is that a is that a metaphor for something? I don't. Do you guys know what that means? Spicy is that tuba. A thing? I, don't, I don't. I don't know. Tuba. Yeah, I mean, perhaps it's a very talented jazz tuba player. Spicy. Yeah, he's spicy because he does like a lot of you know jumps and bounces in the music. You know. Yeah. yeah okay. Whatever. Look, I'm hungry. All right. I hope they have French toast <laughs> or waffles. <laughs> All right, so you head over to the uh, the spicy tuba, which and mimosas. Important. Basically, I want you to picture in your head whatever comes to mind when I say a tavern for pirates. <laughs> that's what this is. <laughs> Rad. Yeah, it is. It is somewhat ramshackle. It is like most of the city, constructed out of derelict ship parts. The inside is actually quite warm and inviting, if a bit untidy, but it looks like you know everything's sanitary. It's it's fairly packed, but not super packed this time of day. You haven't reached the drinking portion of the day, for the most part. Honestly, it sounds like standard brunch protocol. Uh, behind the bar, <laughs> you spot... First, you spot that there is a tuba hanging on the wall behind the bar. A what? Uh, a literal tuba. <laughs> That's a lot of what? wall space. Yeah, it is. And uh, standing almost directly beneath the tuba is a... Some kind of turtle man? Possibly a tortoise <laughs> man. Not the weirdest thing we've seen. Is he the spicy one? <laughs> I think the tube is the spicy one. Okay. Claiming a free table. Yeah. <laughs> the uh, the turtle man eventually uh, sidles around to your table. What can I get you? Do you have mimosas? He kind of blinks at you very slowly. What's on the specials today? He points and there's a sign, like a slate over by the bar. <laughs> it's 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 it says uh breakfast free with it uh free with room and then below that is just in quotation marks food five silver. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And then a list of the various beers on tap. <laughs> okay. Huh. I think each of us will take a food. <laughs> uh, and then could you take whatever the lightest beer is you have on hand and just mix it with some sort of fruit juice? I guess. We'll call that a mimosa. Great. Great. <laughs> <laughs> so he, he, he toddles off to uh, prepare your food. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think it's going to be? <laughs> I don't know. He's a turtle man. Will it be like worms? Look, as, as long as it's not like the caffeinated nug slurry I saw advertised on a couple of chalkboards, I'll be fine. <laughs> I, I still say that Eastheim has the best brunch. I mean, <laughs> how hard is it to get locks? <laughs> how hard is it to make waffles? Yeah, yeah. Eventually, the turtle man comes back. Uh, he has a bunch of plates that have like 
sausage, scrambled egg, uh, some hard cheese. It looks fine. It doesn't look sketchy or like you should be worried about what's in the sausage. Um, and then he also uh, brings the beer mixed with orange juice and s- sets it down in front of uh, Cacophony. Mm, thank you. She takes the uh, not so great mimosa and just starts <laughs> sipping it like it is a great mimosa. <laughs> he toddles back behind the bar. <laughs> you guys want to, like, take my sausage? At- oh, I'm not eating it. Well, I'm not going to eat it. Well, I'll have some eggs. She tries the sausage. <laughs> it's pretty good. It's really dense. You no, get the feeling is- that it's one of those sausages that has to be, like, really heavily smoked and preserved huh. to, like stay good but it's it's good sausage this is really good sausage honestly well i'm I'm sure it is do you want mine i don't eat sausage yeah she reaches over and she claims it i'm gonna eat some of your cheese that's fine <laughs> there it makes me bloated you have mine so. I, I i'm not i don't i don't know what's in there so i'm not eating it you don't know what's in the sausage does yeah. anybody ever know what's in the sausage unless it comes from their own farm yeah i think that's like part of a saying isn't it yeah that's that's part of the sausage I'll pass. I'll have eggs and cheese and bread and and. You don't know what's in. You don't know where those eggs came from, though. Yeah, they could be from turtle eggs. What do we I'm know? I'm just saying, beggar, beggars can't be choosers here. It's food. Foods on the menu. <laughs> I didn't know we were beggars. Well, Cacophony is. I think she's broke now. Well, you guys are paying for me. I just wanted to let you know that. <laughs> I'm so glad I, we discussed this before the bill came to the table. I, I did pay for your dresses. No, mostly. I know that. I'm just saying that it's usually good protocol to just arrange, to just figure out how well, you're going to split the bill if somebody's if somebody's fair. look whatever we get paid at some point. <laughs> Apparently, if we do this job for whatever, we'll have enough to go around. I don't know. Are you guys worried about that? Mm, no, not really. Not yet. You don't think any of it sounds sketchy at all? I mean, of course it sounds sketchy, but. Not really worried. Why not? Darling, my original half is a con artist. I get in sketchy situations all the time. What's new? <sighs> in fact, I developed this personality as a way to con someone, so... Who'd you con? Uh, uh, there was this noble lady back home who was, you know, kind of ruling with an iron fist and forcing all the local towns to pay these giant taxes, and, and so I might have wooed my way into, the, into her castle. And, um, might have blackmailed her into stopping doing that. Might have? Wait. Might have. Might um, that, that's why I can't go home looking like this. I always have to go as Zoe. Wait, that was you? <laughs> that was me! I heard about that! Yeah! I thought she just, like, I don't know, had to change a heart or something. No, now she wants to murder me. It's a big thing. I, I don't go home looking like this. Jeez, we gotta do something about that. No, is, we're we're in space right now. It doesn't matter. Oh, I doubt yeah, she has but a I mean, ship. Like, is your home okay? Uh, I, I have made sure to carefully keep it completely separated from my family. That's kind of lonely. Hmm. That's fine. I mean, if you say so. My sister actually. So, as noted, they don't know that I'm cacophony, and they don't know that I'm associated with that. My sister actually was whenever I went home once. As Zil, uh, and I was, you know, I'm, I'm, I was Win. Uh, I got home, and my sister said that she'd gone to a show of this great bard named Cacophony, and it was hilarious. Wait, she didn't know? She didn't know! My sister doesn't know I'm Cacophony. I mean, no, she didn't think anything seemed, like, weirdly familiar at all? No, I'm very good at disguises. Dang. So, she's, like, your fangirl now. Yes! It's, it's actually hilarious. I love it. <laughs> Like, hilarious isn't like you're laughing at her, or? No, as as in I think it's, I'm not laughing at her. I just think it's kind of nice that my sister thinks I'm a good bot. Does she have any of your merchandise? I assume you have merchandise. I've never actually had any um merchandise myself, but there are some people out there doing it anyway. Oh, yeah, no, I mean, you should definitely get in on that. I should, frankly. At this point, uh, you see Kara kind of walk in clearly looking for you guys she spots you guys <laughs> looks behind the, the the bar heads right over to you guys and says don't let him play the tuba <laughs> why not is it spicy it's it's too spicy <laughs> <laughs> is, is that metaphorical or literal literal it is i don't know don't let him play the tuba <laughs> <laughs> kind of want him to play the tuba now you want some food? We've got some extra sausage. 
She kind of looks at the sausage, raises an eyebrow at it. <laughs> <laughs> Told you so. <laughs> Are you guys all set for tomorrow night? Uh, uh, we I mean, need to still get our Manny Petties, but we've got our clothes. I'm okay. <laughs> Good luck finding the Manny Petties. <laughs> Worst case, Why we can just do them on the ship if you'd like to join in, Kara. Uh, I've got supplies. It's not going to be as luxurious as if we found a location. Another thing that Easeheim has over all these other places is that we do have Manny Petty joints. <laughs> yes, your world is very advanced. I'm very impressed. <laughs> anyway, don't let him play the tuba. And with that, she leaves. <laughs> Did she need something? So I'm not going to lie to you two, but I kind of want him no. to play tuba now. No. <laughs> I, I kind of want him to. No. <laughs> it's, it intrigues me. No. <laughs> no, look. <laughs> I don't think she actually needed anything. She just needed to know that somebody wasn't going to get him to play the tuba. <laughs> uh, as a musician, I want to know what spicy tuba means. <laughs> Look, look, if you do that, we have to leave. We have to leave immediately. I I don't know what that means, but she's been out in space a lot longer than we have. That's true. It's probably bad. So we can do it right before we leave port, then? <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> we'll come back here before we leave port and we'll ask him to play his tuba. Great. Anyway, I'm ready if you guys want to go find a Matty Petty place with me. <laughs> yeah, all right. I've eaten some food. <laughs> <laughs> all right. The tab is uh, 15 silver, four copper. Yeah, I got it. <laughs> Thanks. I'm worried about that, too, but <laughs> I'm just going to add that to Juliana's list of things that she's vaguely worried about. <laughs> it's a long list. <laughs> All right, so you guys are off in search of Manny Petties. Yes. All right, uh, whoever's leading the charge, roll in an investigation check. I trust Cacophony on this one. <laughs> Thirteen. Thirteen, okay. You ask around, and there isn't a lot of... There isn't, all, there these isn't a all these pirates are like, what the fuck is up with these three? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, can, you see a couple of the same people that you asked about brunch, <laughs> We're equally perplexed about Manny Petties. <laughs> you get two. You get two possible leads. One is a store called Potions, 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 <laughs> <laughs> and the other is an establishment referred to simply as Stuff. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It looks like we can go to Potions, 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 or Potions times three, or we can go to Stuff. Opinions. Honestly. Stuff seems like the broader category. <laughs> it does seem like the broader category. Well, potions, potions, potions may have, I feel like, nail polish remover, but not necessarily anything else. Or it could just blow up our nails. Stuff it is! <laughs> <laughs> what could be a stuff? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you go, you go searching, and you wind up actually back in the same general merchant quarter that the dress shop was in, uh, but across the main square, you see a, a very large warehouse, and as you approach the warehouse, you see that there is a shingle hanging above the door that has just, like, the word stuff crudely carved into a wooden sign. <laughs> this is not encouraging. <laughs> I'm into it. I still don't understand. We're gonna let people put stuff on our toenails? I don't, I don't see the point toenails and regular nails. It looks fabulous, dear. Yeah, it's just kind of a little like spot of color, and, and plus it's very pleasant. Honestly, they kind of massage your hands and feet, and they feel real good. Yeah, actually, sometimes you get your stick, <laughs> you just stick your feet in like a big vat and in, in like oh. a big tub of hot water, and it like oh. just let them soak, and it's, it's it's nice. And and then they have sometimes they'll use like a little bit of magic and presentation to make the water bubble. It is superb. Mwah. There's like oils and stuff. It's good. And then you feel so soft afterward. It's pampering. Have you not pampered? Yeah. I don't think you've pampered. Alvi, but you need to learn how to pamper. Yeah. Oh, okay, I'll take you word for it. I'll give it a shot, but I'm, I'm a little leery of this whole Manny Petty thing. <laughs> Cacophony leads the way into stuff, bursting in dramatically as she does through any door. Okay, this place is gigantic, and it is packed floor to ceiling with adequately stuff. Are there signs that say deals, deals, deals? <laughs> no. However, oh. there are 
Like, there's no rhyme or reason to where anything is. You see a bunch of firearms that are probably improperly stored. Just random ass, like, weapons, armor, pieces of miscellaneous, like, gear. Uh, an entire display that's just bags of ball bearings. Uh, <laughs> and as you get further in and then you turn around, you realize you can't really see the exit anymore and it's a little terrifying. Oh my god, it's an antique mall. I love this. <laughs> Tell me there's a section with, like, model trains <laughs> and a whole bunch of old, like, a bunch of old board games that are probably missing most of their pieces and feature <laughs> celebrities from, like, 50 years ago that you don't recognize. <laughs> there is. Would you believe that the display of model trains is actually just kind of piled on top of the board games? I really would. <laughs> 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 the model trains aren't set up. It's just like a box of miscellaneous model train accoutrement. <laughs> I lose all sense of direction in there. <laughs> I'm pretty sure we've walked by this display of racist old timey figurines before. <laughs> Did you see that strange claw footed thing that I first thought was a bathtub, but I'm pretty sure is actually a torture chamber? Yeah, yeah, that was that was not great. It, it was kind of it was kind of stained. <laughs> it was. But not even with blood. It was like green. Unless that is blood. I don't know. You know, I don't think we're... Everything here smells and like is kind of dusty. I don't think we're going to find nail polish in here. <laughs> do, you, do you guys remember how we how we got in here? I don't know how we get out of here. <laughs> I'm lost. Alviva, you're, you're like a... You're a ranger. How do we leave? <laughs> Help us find the exit. Please. We'll hold hands. <laughs> Well, there's enough dust on the floor, we could follow, probably follow our tracks back. I believe in you. <laughs> Alviva, roll a survival check. <laughs> survival? <laughs> wow, we're really getting serious here. <laughs> Normal? Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Nothing to it. <laughs> could you read out the number for the internet people? Oh, I'm sorry, internet people. I rolled a 24, survival 5. Yay! <laughs> so I, we survived? You survived. You managed to uh, trace your steps back to the exit of stuff. <laughs> See? You need a ranger along all the time. I mean, that's why, why you're here, my dear. So you can get this out of... I, I don't know why my accent suddenly changed. Uh, so you can get this out <laughs> of these situations. There you go. We trust you. So you guys have given up on stuff? I'm intimidated by stuff. <laughs> Let's just go back to the ship and we can do mani petties with my supplies. Sounds like a plan. Okay. Sounds like a plan, yeah, because uh, I'm really not nervous about this whole process anyway, so I'd probably feel much better if we did it you know, our own surroundings. Ugh, you're nervous. I can do your hair. <laughs> so you guys head back to the ship. Nothing appears to have changed very much on the ship. So we have to dump all of our parcels, right? Because these dresses take up a lot of... Well, the um, the dresses will be ready tomorrow morning. Oh, I forgot that. They have to, there's alterations. Oh, okay. These are fancy dresses. They don't just come off the rack. Silly me. A cacophony gets some foot baths with warm water going. <laughs> and sets everybody down in the boardroom. <laughs> it's the ward room, but okay. Yeah, you board keep room. calling it a Whatever. board room. This ship does not have a board room. <laughs> the ship does not have a board. Okay. <laughs> you can have a board room without a board. <laughs> I, I set us all down in the wardroom in that case. <laughs> Has everybody else just been, like, dicking around on the ship or what? Well, you see, there's things that have to be done in terms of uh, repairs, maintenance, things like that. Ship duties. Right. All right. Um. So what I'm thinking is we'll we'll get started on you two. I can do my many petties later. And I was also going to deep condition both your hairs. What's wrong with my hair? Why are you always picking on my hair? I'm, I'm not picking on your hair, dear. I'm just saying that if we deep well, condition it and wash it today, that would mean tomorrow it's a little bit easier to work with. What's wrong with it the way it is? I like my hair. I like your hair, too, but we're going to a fancy party. Also, it's a real bad idea to wash my hair. I, I there, There's particular, oh, like, I, ways I, that you I take understand. care of this stuff. We, can, we, we cannot worry about your, um, because dreadlocks are, are harder to deal with. Yeah. So we'll mostly focus on the Mandy Petty with you. We can deep condition Alviva's hair, and I will deep condition my wig. Again with the hair. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, when was the last time you conditioned that? Alviva? The silence Hi. is telling. 
Yeah, I'm thinking. I'm thinking that I don't think I've ever conditioned my hair. I lived in a forest. What do you consider conditioning? Oh, God. Oh, you got your work <laughs> oh, cut out for the you. Oh, by the gods. <laughs> Juliana like puts a bracing hand on Cacophony's shoulder. <laughs> Cacophony looks like Cacophony currently has her hands uh, together uh, in front of her face and she's kind of leaning against them like she's about to faint. Hey, you know what? You like a project, right? I do like a project. So now I'm a project? Now you're a project. <laughs> Look, just lean into it. We're just, we're just going to teach you the art of both regular conditioning, which is now what you're going to do every time you wash your hair. And deep conditioning. How often do you wash your hair? I wash my hair every time we come across a body of water. I jump in a lake. Okay, that's fair. <laughs> um, and you don't want to wash your hair too often. So that, that's that's a good sign. If a little bit unsanitary and slightly gross. Um, do you know there's a shower on board? I shower. All right. How often? Well, whenever we come back from a mission, I shower. All right. We're going to start doing that a little bit more often, dear. <laughs> Um, you know, the forest is looking better and better all the time. Uh, and they're going to wash your hair only once a week. Okay. And we're going to condition every time that you wash. And we're going to deep condition. I'm, I'm going to just start you at once a month because, <laughs> frankly, that's fine. We'll work up from there. Yeah, right. <laughs> all right. Uh, just sit down many patties right now. All right. What, what colors you got? <laughs> um, cacophony comes out with like it's basically a fishing tackle box, Rad. and she opens it up and it's it's layered and and it's and it's uh, set up. It starts with white and then goes through the rainbow of colors. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> All levels of sparkled matte, and then at the end is like are the are the blacks and the grays and darks and stuff. Awesome. I do want to point out that uh, Finn joins you guys for the many petties. <laughs> oh, sounds yes! great. He's scaly. He needs all the help he can get. <laughs> yes, please. Yes, please. He's got to have fancy little signing hands. The yes. feet baths are very warm. And then with prestidigitation, she's going to make them bubble. <laughs> <laughs> Just a, this riveting mani-pedi action. Yes. So Cacophony goes through and, and, and does does do it rather expertly. One gets the feeling she's gotten a lot of these. So she does them, she she files the nails down, does tips if they want tips, and then uh, paints them elaborately. <laughs> wow, you do, like, nail art. And then instantly dries them with magic so that they don't crack or anything. How did you not make it bleed over the sides? What are you, what, what sorcery are you doing? <laughs> I've done this a long time, dear. Oh my gosh, yeah, no, clearly. <laughs> you don't look this fabulous without lots of work. All right, that all taken care of. Finn, I gotta say, your claws look magnificent. <laughs> he signs thank you. Once that's done, she just grabs Alviva uh -oh. by the arm. We'll be back. And she just calls <laughs> her off. <laughs> hey, 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 watch the arm. She hauls her away. If you let it happen, it'll take less time. <laughs> I can't believe you're, I'm going through this. I can't believe I'm doing this. So, Alviva, you're gonna get a face mask, too. You can have <laughs> Oh, Anybody whoa. can have one of those if they want. It's going to be like a watch. mud treatment mask. <laughs> you're going to put goop on my face? Yes, you're going to let it stay on there for 15 minutes. I don't understand. <laughs> on the one hand, you say I don't shower enough, and then on the second hand, you're putting dirt all over my face. <laughs> it helps, dear. Uh, and then just lean back, and she starts washing out Fiva's hair and, like, conditioning it. This is, this is intense action. People are riveted. <laughs> I'm not doing this willingly. I hope it's... I hope everybody knows that. We well, you know. <laughs> yeah, we can hear. It's, it's like trying to bathe a cat. <laughs> Left to her own devices, Juliana's pretty much just going to sit there, drum her fingers, and then eventually start to fret. <laughs> <laughs> but eventually there's, there's, some, there's some blow drawing, which how does that work in fantasy world? Whatever, magic. <laughs> <laughs> this is a gust cantrip. <laughs> oh my god my hair is poofed up all around my face i look like a got stuck in a garbage disposal if we had such a thing as garbage disposal and then but she, she she runs her hair through um a few times there's some moose involved and then she comes back out with a uh clean haired conditioned haired alviva <laughs> wow <laughs> that's your hair color <laughs> <laughs> I feel ridiculous. You look great. 
though. <laughs> I still don't see what was wrong with my hair before. I mean, like, when you pat your head, does it come away, like, vaguely oily? I don't think I want to touch it. Well, that's probably fair. <laughs> It's very fluffy looking right now. <laughs> it, it looks really good. Like, it's going to look like really good with that outfit, though. <laughs> uh -huh. The things I do for you people. <laughs> All right, I've got you two taken care of. I'm going to go take care of myself. And then tomorrow we're doing this. <laughs> Are we doing makeup tomorrow? Yeah, we're going to want to do makeup. Uh, so we're going to want to start several hours before the party. <laughs> yeah, because I'm not because I'm not really good at this. So I, I'll take care of you, dear. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I promise I will not make it as garish as I do myself. <laughs> Much obliged. <laughs> Swear to God, the first thing I'm doing, we find a water trough, I'm dunking my hair in it. Okay, but <laughs> at, like after the party, though, okay? <laughs> like, otherwise she's just going to do the whole thing all over again. <laughs> you know Cacophony. She is unstoppable. <laughs> Don't touch it. So, uh, if everybody else uh, has done all the things they want to do, I guess we can fast forward to, uh, after the party preparations the following evening. During the party preparations, though, like, Juliana starts, like, getting extremely nervous. <laughs> cacophony doesn't actually get into her Cacophony costume for a while. She's still one while she's getting everybody else ready. Because she's like, I can take care of my own preparations in five minutes. <laughs> So she's in the process of getting everybody else ready with her with her gnarled ear. And as Zilwyn, she's trying to boost uh, boost your confidence a little bit, Juliana. You're going to look fashionable, dear. You're going to look amazing. Everything's going to go perfectly. Everybody else is going to be in fancy outfits, though, right? Everybody else is going to be in fancy outfits. Like, everybody else. So you're not going to have to worry about standing out too much. No, that's not what I'm concerned about. What are you concerned about? Hey, we're going to be standing next to her. Nobody will notice us. <laughs> Your all eyes will be on cacophony, I'm sure. No, that's... Oh, I no, hope not. It's, no, I... Mm. What's the matter, Jill? Boys. <laughs> oh, that's fair. Well, Juliana, I have something to say to you. Yeah. And that's... Yeah. I have not seen him making eyes at anybody else. I... I... But... He's going to think you're ravishing. <sighs> I, I just, I, I turned into a big tongue-tied mess, and, and, and... That's actually very cute. But, uh, but, like, the last meaningful interaction we had was, like, he just said he gets bored easily, and, like, that would super-duper account for, like, every single time that, like, he has actually paid any attention to me. Like, I, I figured it would have been, like, um, you know, uh, pity, but boredom works, too. And That's and... your anxiety stepping in, dear. Yeah, but, like... If he got bored very easily, he wouldn't seek you out to actively talk to you. He doesn't. I'll... He's talked to you several times, dear. Mm. <laughs> he would go out of his way to avoid you, which is what he does with me. <laughs> uh, yeah, but like, oh no, I, I just, he's got, Talatha gave him a token, which he's definitely just carrying around in his pocket all the time, apparently, so that's great. Well, I can assure you that he doesn't realize it's a token, and he probably just thinks it's something he can use. You think? He does not seem the type to understand what a token is. He doesn't? No. Huh. <laughs> One thing I have learned in all my travails is that men are dumb. <laughs> <laughs> we women and several of the, of the men I know and uh, non-binary, everybody out there, will do something they think is coy and clever and and they'll be like ah they caught my subtle my subtle hint and any man i have seen it done upon completely misses the point you know it's really easy for you to say that when you're like fundamentally uninterested that's true i am fundamentally un 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 uninterested in men but i am knowledgeable about romance uh... toolbox please not right now <laughs> Toolbox has opinions. <laughs> uh, I have, in fact, given my token to many a woman. And, um, for instance, this is this is a tale. Uh, back when I uh, here as Jill, when I had both my ears, so I, it, it was I was, gosh, I was so young then. I was seventy eight, I think. I was I was seventy eight. I was at a bar. I saw this 
lovely lady. Uh, she had raven hair and, and striking blue eyes and, and a sprinkle of freckles over her nose. And I go over to her and I offer her a rose. And you know what this woman says to me? A what? rose, which I think is hap- I, I don't think it's subtle at all. No, not really. She says, oh, did you know I'm a gardener? I love roses. Huh. Uh, and then she took it and took it outside and used some magic to make it grow a rose bush. She just used it for clippings? Yes. <laughs> That's harsh. <laughs> Did not realize it was a token of affection at all. Just thought I was being friendly. Oh, that's sad. Yeah, I'm sorry. That oh, that's fine. I've, I've, I don't care. That was over 300 years ago. What I'm saying is he probably hasn't realized that it's a token of affection. Y- you think? I am almost for certain. In fact, I think if you brought it up, he would get embarrassed and throw it overboard. <laughs> that would be kind of funny. So she pats Jillian on the shoulder. Buck up, my dear. You're doing great. I hate this. <laughs> Trust me, when you're older, it gets easier. Mm. How old are you two, anyway? I never understand, like, non-elf ages. Do you- I mean, like, 23, does that number mean anything to you? <laughs> in elf ages, how old is that? What's elf ages? I don't know. Are you an adult? <laughs> Am I an adult? <sighs> <laughs> Juliana just, like, rubs her temples and, like- You have to understand, 23 would be a child. Yes, I'm an, an adult. All right. I mean, ostensibly. You are considered fully grown, huh? Sure, aren't you? Uh, not really. I'm still pretty young for an elf, for a, for a human. For an elf, you definitely are. <laughs> no, I, as a human, I'm, I'm considered pretty young. Wait, you're like, mm. you're like not too, you're not that much younger, right? Well. Okay, now I need to know if I've been hanging around bars with a child. <laughs> the, thing is, the thing is, we don't really know exactly how old I am, but. Oh, that's fair. Well, what's your guess? Come on, you guys had to have, a, like, a midwinter birthinox or something. <laughs> well, considering when I was found and how long I was with the old man, I'm probably about 18. Okay. Huh. Is that old? No, that's pro- pre- still pretty okay. young. Well, she can drink anyway, so we haven't technically been committing any crimes. Excellent. I'm 358. Yee. You're well preserved for 328. <laughs> uh, that's, that's, that's... Only in, the, like, the middle years of my life. You're like a mom? No, I'm 358. Oh my god. And is that considered fully grown? You turn fully grown as an elf and you hit 100. Wow. Oh my god, I'm friends with a child and a mom. <laughs> <laughs> so much is becoming clear to me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so... So you're you're mature and you're wise and you're going to look out for us when we go to this prom thing. Right? I mean, that's what I was planning on in the first place. Okay, first off, mature, like, yeah, and she gestures to, like, the cleavage. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, right now she is Zilwin, so she's just wearing a sweater. And this sweater, for some reason, says Spelljammer University. <laughs> Where did you get that? <laughs> uh, I, I bought it at Port. Is there a university just for, you know It's what, actually I, very soft. Feel the inside. Let me feel. Ooh. And this pocket can hold almost anything. How many universities have you gone to? How many are there? Zero. Look at her. She's dropped out of like four community colleges. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> hey, except the College of Glamour. I just, I just assume that's Kara. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was Kara. <laughs> It was actually six. <laughs> I guess technically the sixth one I got kicked out of, I didn't drop out. Did you know that it's illegal to perform on top of the administration building? <laughs> I didn't. Oh my god, you had like a college movie experience. I did. Glamour house! <laughs> <laughs> so you guys going to this fucking party or what? <laughs> yes, please! I'm beginning to wonder. Now that, now that all of you are dressed, I'm going to go get dressed. And Cacophony leaves and comes back dressed and asks Cacophony and no longer Zillin. I figured if we stalled long enough, maybe we wouldn't have to go. But... No, we're going. <laughs> we're going to a fancy party and we're getting dressed up nice. Oh, all right. So what, are we walking? 
<laughs> to the other oh, side of God. town? Um, hmm, 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 hmm. Dressed like this? <laughs> There's got to be the equivalent of an Uber in this <laughs> place. Uh, <laughs> Kara looks at you guys and says, yeah, you're walking. Uh, okay, I'm definitely bringing my swords. Yeah. By the way, as you guys get up onto the deck, all all dressed up, uh, Kara is not quite as dressed up as you guys, but she's got like a nice coat on. Everybody else does not appear to be going because they're not dressed up at all. <laughs> oh no! Uh, are we handling negotiations then? Kara raises a hand and says, "I'll I'll be talking to him mostly because I'm the one who knows him." Okay. Wait, why are we going? Back up. All right. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So you guys head out. Yep. Yeah, let's head out for this party. All right, you guys head across town. There does appear to be quite a bit of a crowd going in that direction already, so it's clear that the attendance at this party is going to be very, very high. You arrive there, and uh, the entrance to the party is actually the gangplank up to the deck of the Providence. The de the party itself is being held on the deck. And up on the uh, stern castle, and I know I'm pronouncing it incorrectly, and fuck you. Um <laughs> It, uh, up uh, up on the stern castle is uh, some kind of impromptu throne room that's been set up. Oh, it's very dramatic. There's a Goddess. lot of decorations. There's a lot of red velvet draped everywhere. Are there are there like spotlights, like searchlights? There are some spotlights that, upon further examination, just appear to be like people standing up in the rigging with like mirrors that someone has cast light on. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. So oh, uh, this is disgusting. I want to take this moment as you guys enter the party for uh, to describe everyone's outfits. Okay. <laughs> but I look across the stern castle. Holy crap. <laughs> I thought these outfits were one of a kind. <laughs> they are, dear. Well, there's somebody at the other end of there. It looks like they're wearing my outfit. <laughs> you wear it better. <laughs> I'm, oh, God. I'm so embarrassed. <laughs> All right, so what's everybody wearing? It's not Alviva. <laughs> Juliana, your turn. Okay, so Juliana is wearing, like, it's kind of like a floor-length wrap dress that, like, starts out at the top in, like, a light blue and sort of, like, transitions to, like, kind of a dark, like, dark teal at the bottom. Um, and it's got, like, a, like, some, like, a thin gold, like, cinch belt. Uh, actually, all of her, like, all of her jewelry and accents and stuff are in, like, red gold. Or rose gold. Um, she's got like strappy sandals. Her nails are all done up in like blues. Um, and she is also wearing like, she's got like pauldrons that are in like kind of a wing motif. And there is a like wine red like cape coming off of the back. <laughs> and uh, she's got a whole bunch of like cuffs and wires in her hair that are also in that rose gold. Yes. Oh, Wow. Yeah, uh, Christina Woods uh, designed yeah. this when I mentioned the word space prom to her. She got very excited. So uh, <laughs> that is that that's that's my fancy dress <laughs> for my cleric. All right, and what's Cacophony wearing? A uh, Cacophony is presently wearing a very overdramatic, poofy golden dress that's just like layers of tulle and layers of sparkle, and makes her look like a giant golden cupcake. <laughs> <laughs> uh, her hair is currently up in curls and it's kind of cascading around her face and presently her eyes are also a sparkling golden color and she's uh, woven like golden bangles into her hair Ooh. <laughs> yeah let's see that shit there's the dress <gasps> very fancy yeah. oh my <laughs> this is just my entrance dress darling <laughs> So Cacophony has to go first. And you guys kind of have to walk behind her because that skirt is <laughs> wide. Yeah, she has to go in. I don't even know how she's going to get through the doorway. <laughs> she manages it. One wonders if that's the actual skirt or if she's just amped it up with magic. Why not both? So a uh, a pirate dressed like a very fancy footman uh, checks your guys' invitation, uh, actually sniffs it, uh, and hands it back. <laughs> <laughs> <Ugh>. <laughs> And you guys enter into the party. There is a buffet set up along one side of the room. Uh, it mostly appears to be just like standing room only, although there are some tables uh, sort of off to the side. Uh, it is currently rather sedate, mostly people t t standing around and chatting. It hasn't gotten to like the proper party portion of the evening yet. There is also an open bar. Ooh.
Gem Jammer is performed by Annie Creighton, Kit Walker, Mackenzie Weaver, and Vicki Sharon, and it is edited by Jake Mason. Our character designs were concepted by Rio, who you can find at vriosart on Twitter, and our cover art was illustrated by Canary Witch, who you can find at doodlesfromthebird.tumblr.com. Our opening and closing music is by Reckoning Storm Audio Works. You can find more episodes of this show, as well as our other shows and news, at our website, crookedrussiancam.horse. You can find us on Twitter at CRC Podcasts and on Tumblr at crookedrussiancam.tumblr.com. If you want to support us, a like, rating, review, subscribe wherever you find our podcast is super helpful and helps us get discovered. And if you want to give us some money, you can do that at patreon.com slash the jam jam or ko-fi.com slash crooked Russian cam. All right, hang on. I got to pull up the freaking city map. <laughs> find a brunch restaurant. You know, would you believe that's not one of the things I had prepared? And in what? retrospect, I should have. Yeah, what? <laughs> <laughs>